So they did add something where you're supposedly able to switch out um, identities and egos as you progress, which will be nice because I got the Roja new ego. So I really want to be able to use it. But I think I have to hit a certain point first, which I don't know where the point is. So big old question marks. Let's do this. Let's do this. Ishmael stuck with me. <laughs> so I can't do much about her currently. Uh, Ishmael stared wordlessly at Queequeg. I, I thought you, everyone, died. Me too. Also thought you dead. Where I was, we bury dead people. No burning. In earth, in hearts, deep, never to dig up again. Because we have, because we have to forget. Did you bury me too? I want to see sunset again. That's not much of an answer. That keeps me going, breathing, throwing harpoons. Okay, I kind of, okay, after that I kind of get it. Kwekwe couldn't hold on to hope of Ishmael or seeing Ishmael ever because Ishmael's thought to be dead. What do you look forward to with where you're at? I thought you didn't like the outside world. I mean, after living in the whale, I think she'd probably start to really want to see it. <laughs> Sunset always warm, wherever it sets. I'm hearing a terrifying cry coming from far away. It's the mermaid's cry. Our future if we fail to escape. Cry and cry, trying to kill all we see. Then melt, very slowly, and later, float away like we were never here. Don't want to be a, don't want to be mermaid. The pallid whale, have to kill it, only then we get out. I see another vision of Ishmael. It's growing more and more frequent. Maybe it's the influence of the golden bow. Crying. Every night, a terrifying cry echoes from the holds. Oh, prior Starbuck looks so different. His hair's grown out. Pip, it's your turn to go down there. The mermaids cried every single night, so we had to lock them deep in the holds. Pip doesn't want to go down there. It's scary. That's just the luck of your draw, Pip. I'm sorry, but you gotta accept it. Isn't it weird, quick quick? Why are we doing any of this? Oh, I like that you can see, like, the tattoos and the scars from underneath the pallid whale stuff. Ishmael, steal yourself. We'll see pallid whale soon. Which means all this be over soon. Yeah, it'll all be over soon. So when this voyage is over... What is this mess? Can you not even man your stations properly? You deckhands? Captain, Pip doesn't want to go down there. Pip's scared to death. It's so scary down there. Every night Pip hears, every night he scratches at the locked door. 
Get hold of yourself, Pip. That's just a mermaid. Pip knows. Pip saw. That was... That was our mate Stub, Captain. The pillowed whale ate Stub, and the boat he was on, and... Pip, turn away from the sound of the holds. Look far beyond to the Great Lake. The pallid whale's day of reckoning draws near. The louder the mermaid cries, the closer we are to our goal. That creature will lead us to the pallid whale. That night I snuck into Captain Ahab's quarters. To enter the captain's quarters unauthorized was like breaking a taboo. Every sailor knew that. If I was caught, I would have had to accept whatever punishment they decided to levy upon me for committing a sin that may as well have been mutiny. But I don't know what I was thinking when I walked in there. Captain Ahab? I... Captain? The captain's eyes were locked on the map of the Great Lake, stuck to the ceiling of her quarters. She did not stir. I looked at the site for a moment before stumbling out of the captain's quarters. I had to. So you went into the captain's quarters, huh? Mr. Starbuck. Captain never gets the proper shut-eye. Even when she sleeps, she sleeps with her eyes wide open. She's always looking for that pallid whale somewhere in the Great Lake. Even as she dreams. Captain ain't sleeping. She's awake. Always is. Yeah, on the Pequod, the captain had a tight leash around us. We were merely gasping on what little air she permitted us. Go on, get some rest. Like Captain said, that whale's gotta be close. I don't always understand the captain, but sometimes I wish she'd entertain different ideas. But we won't have to suffer much more of that. We'll all be free soon. Once we kill the pallid whale and leave this ship. We... Did the flashback... The uh, flashback got cut off by a flight! Okay, glad I went more piercy. Because still seem to be mermaids right now. I haven't hit the abnormalities yet. Okay, <laughs> 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 Okay, easy, easy, not, not all smooth. Uh, soon after setting sail, whoa, we started hearing something shaking underneath the ship. What's that? Forsooth, there may be a foe underneath our ship, scratching. Yeah, that's ominous. We should check it out. What do we do? Check underneath the ship. Esmail gains 10 SP and proceed to the next choice prompt. We don't know what will happen if we do. Let's stay put. Each male loses 10 SP. 50% chance of combat encounter. Gain ego gift upon victory. Let's check underneath. Yeah, of course we should. As soon as we decide 
I had to check underneath the boat, a powerful shock rocked the stern of the boat. Mermaids, hostiles are climbing from the bottom of the ship. We can minimize our losses by having one of us go push them off the ship before they latch on. As soon as I was decided, two sinners jumped from their seat and approached me. I will go, executive manager. No, I am better suited for this task. Two sinners begin bickering. Wrath advantage, I don't know what happened, let's choose someone fearless. Wrath has advantage! None of the people high have wrath! Okay, Sinclair is normal. Wrath has advantage. Four and seven. Otis Sweet Otis struck a mermaid crawling up from the waters. Selected identity took 15 HP damage. Melted LCB employee badge earned. Pride damage taken minus 10%. Alrighty. You can't curtail this. Trying to go for things I know will be ego helpful. Are the ones I at least use the most in terms of egos. But also see what I'm lower on. I wish it was here. Wish I could see what I've gathered in terms of cost. Ah, <sighs> well, there's a checkpoint right there. Enter a narrow short and narrow waterway of sorts. Executive manager. I see mermaids swimming under the ship. Mermaids latched onto the wall. Walls are glaring at us as well. This place hard to steer. Steer and keep track of directions hard to do at once. Someone will have to keep track of the directions. Pride advantage. I have a lot of those. I have a lot of people with pride. Why are none of them on the very high? There you go. Thank you, Don Quixote. Left! The road split to three. Wait, look. Opening at two o'clock. Thanks to Don Quixote's quick and clever directions, we were making quick work of the waterways. There's no end to them, huh? But the horde of mermaids attacking our ship doesn't seem any smaller than it did when we first entered. But the horde of merm- Uh... Selected identity heals 5 SP. Exit still far. So we'll have to continue to keep dragging over our direction. Who should- Should we continue using the same method? We lost her! Oh, now Hong Lu is showing pride? Gimme, give gimme. Give Thank you, sir! Go straight! Now right, thanks to Hong Lu's quick and clear directions, we are making quick work of the waterways. There's no end to them, huh? But the horde of mermaids attacking our ship doesn't seem any smaller than it did when we first entered. Uh, 10 SP healed? Almost there. We escape soon. To next area. We're almost there. Almost out, but not let's get placing just yet. Pride has the advantage. Everyone is low. Ishmael's the only one showing high. Aside from Roja, neither of them are pride. Okay, so 5 plus 4. So base 5, 9. She'd need to hit all f 3 of these. 8. Between 8 and 23. I think she'd only need to hit 2. My math is correct. Okay. 
Come on, Ishii. Give it. Give it. Yes! Oh, yes, you only needed two, thank. Ooh. Bye, hair. It's opening up. Wait, there's a drop. Steady as you go. Whew. Oh. More rocks ahoy. Left 10 degree rudder. Steady and full right. R and right full rudder. They say Ishmael's quick and straightforward directions. We managed to lose the mermaids and escape the waterways. Been a while since we've done something like this together. Yes, remember Starbuck on helm. You, me, shouting at Starbuck. Yeah. The ship was covered with blood and oil of mermaids we killed in the waterways. These, useful. Put them in barrel. The boat smooth sailed to the next area as we spent our time collecting mermaid oil from the ship. There was so much of it that the deck was almost flooded with it. 15 SP healed and mermaid oil earned. Also crossed not earned. I guess that's for getting through both without having to fight? Uh, inflict one additional tremor with a skill that inflicts tremor. That's just good. Simple. Turn N if more than 50% of the max HP was lost this turn, gain two attack up power next turn. That also seems just good. I love how I healed all that SP and now I'm here and it's reset. <laughs> ah. Okay, I'm just gonna go in with who I've been going with. And we might need to back out. Depending on what this fight ends up being. That? Not mermaid, not male. Well, not whale. Monster from outskirts. Their official de denomination is abnormalities. They are once contained within the lobotomy court branch, but the whale has devoured them. I saw similar things before, but not abnormality. Different. Yes, indeed. In the outskirts, anything with in the realm of possibility. I find it credible that you may have encountered similar entities in the outskirts. Abnormalities born how? They were once human. They have been created by humans as a source of new energy. They have wishes. Looks like... You asked if abnormalities have specific wants or desires, yes? Yes. They know what they want? What they desire, what they wish. Well, looks like wants and desires are all that they have left. Must be nice. Knowing what you want, knowing what you desire. Queequeg was ceaselessly scratching at her arm as her eyes remained fixed on the abnormalities. She was scratching so hard that the blood and pale gunk were starting to seep from her torn skin. <laughs> quick, quick, stop. You're bleeding. Still doing that, huh? Born again. Cocoon. Couldn't become one. Okay, you're resistant to, like, everything, it looks like? Oh, that's favored, at least. That's favored. 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 Dominating. And we'll go for the unopposed. Oh no. Ew. Don't puke. Oh, me son, please. Oh, that's the 
curl. Okay. Oh, great. It has ads. Of course it has ads. They aren't attacking, though, so I guess I should... Favored. 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 This is unopposed. Who is it? Oh, it's attacking the gunk. Kill this gunk before it can eat it, please. Seems to be the answer to that. Oh, it is targeting the things. One. Okay, all three of these back attacks are targeting those. Neutral, neutral. Okay. He's favored. Is the other one Nissan? Um. Neutral? What about your gloom? Favored. Okay. Everyone else! What's your better move? I can't remember. Let's face this mind. I think... Salute is your better. This is not the better Rojo move. This one will better. And I'll do extra damage on the one that we're just going for. Okay, that's one. Damn it, not enough. Two. The closely added appears to be a gem of sorts, born after a long, long, long time of waiting. Born in the ebb and flow of filth that fills and leaves that thing with every movement. Taking its gem would be equivalent to taking its reason for existence away. It may fall apart without it. Shit, you have a gluttony skill. Why isn't it that one? Hey! Fuck! <laughs> Sir! Includes reaches toward the twinkling light, the green slime, and the acidic burning sensation, the writhing leather, all of its unnerves, the sinners. It is no way to pass rummaging through that in search of that light. Heathcliff could not stand it anymore. Patience prefer. Uh, Perseverance does not last forever. The sinner had to free their hand from its maws. The experience left nothing but wounds for both Heathcliff and the thing. Heathcliff loses 20 SP and 40 health. Yeah. Uh. Helpless, favored. Um, someone needs to do an ego. <laughs> Dominating. Favored. Favored. Unfortunately, it's focusing on me, so I can't get rid of the slimes right now. Come on, you son! No! That's still decent. 
Can we stagger the shell? Shit. Shit. Really targeting hung leather? Ooh. Oh, Heath is still staggered. Dominating. Dominating. Favored. Favored. Tremor burst. Oh, I can get full stagger now. Okay. This is risky. Zero percent chance to corrode though, so gonna take the gamble. That show is pearl. I've coupled both. So, I think a pearl should be the focus. No more gunk. It's like so close to a stagger line. Hello? Almost. Favored? Like, what is something better? A little bit. Favored. Dominating. Dominating. When? Is she? You sound Gwen. I only saw him lose focus. The target of the other two. So I think it just got staggered again. Or not. Oh, yeah, the shell is not. The pearl is. Oh. Rude. Okay. I'm going to target Pearl. 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 Oh, it's the poison. That's what it is. I just realized what was causing it. We had that mention about losing his reason for living. This goes how I want it to. It will die with the sun shower. Yep. 
Not too bad. The poison definitely screwed me up because, like, how are people getting staggered? <laughs> quick, quick. What are you doing? Quicker you suspend some nights in crushing loneliness and unbearable pain. We can stand in the corner of the dark, dark room. She looked down at her arms. Then with a small dagger, she uses for cutting harpoon ropes. She mercilessly tore into her arm like she was carving something into her flesh. This is price. <laughs> Appear closer, her body was covered with countless strange tattoos. Over them were scars of old and gassed wounds, cut as though to hide the tattoos drawn on her skin. Did you do that to yourself? I did. But why? Because of shame. Because the tattoos, I engraved them. Myself. Quick, I don't do this. We'll go look for a place that could erase your tattoos. There's gotta be one out there. One at the nest. So stop hurting yourself like this. My tattoos. Tattooed in a special way. So no normal way to erase. And even if there is, I won't erase like that. Why? No way to be free from past. On a whaling ship, any discussion of the crew's past was an unspoken taboo. Whalers were often running from their past. We wanted to wash their past away in the waves. Or threw themselves against the waves in their desperate need for money. Because of their past, potentially. Ishmael, you already knew. I come from the middle. <gasps> That's why they put the middle in! Okay, this ties so much better then! Because the middle really just comes off as, like, this BS out of nowhere attached to the Hook Pirates. Why isn't it just the Hook Pirates? Where the fuck's Captain Hook? Which I'm still gonna ask where the fuck's Captain Hook. But still! Oh, wow! That makes so much better! It ties it so well! Like, I didn't immediately connect the two? Because it's just tattoos, so why would Queequeg's necessarily be related to the middle, if not something else? So, oh, that is so good, though. Okay, that just... It makes so much more sense now why they put the middle in, of having that both be from Queequeg's past... The reason she has her tattoos... To have that connection to this is what the middle is. Here's someone from the middle. So when Queequeg says, I am came, I come from the middle, there's a direct, like, through line to the previous boss. Oddly enough, currently Queequeg and Big Brother are the hardest two in this fucking chapter. <laughs> so, of course, she comes from the middle. <sighs> I had a hunch when I saw your tattoos. I was just excited to see Queequeg. I didn't even think about the middle. <sighs> the middle never forgets. Everyone in the back streets knows the story. Though it may be just one of those tall tales, it's not a tale one can so casually laugh off. 
Once a child bumped into a stranger, spilled ice cream on his clothes. A stranger whose clothes were spoiled and comforted this crying child and sent him on his way home. That stranger was an officer of the middle. And then the spoiled clothes happened to be his favorite set. That day was the last day anyone, including the child, ever saw the child's family. Maybe it's just dark humor, maybe it's just one of those countless, baseless urban legends, but no one dares to treat this tale like it is. Because the middle really was like that. Petty bitches? <laughs> it's what I'm hearing. Oof. The middle that I've heard of. I know that the middle accepts anyone into their fold, but I always heard that once you're part of the middle, they'll never let you go. This actually adds another layer, I realize. Because me, the reason why Ishmael provoked the name of Queequeg when at the club was knowing that club had connections to the middle and the hook officers have connection to the middle but all potentially already knowing those connections to say i know where queequeg is knowing that they would be looking for queequeg because she's a member of the middle yes the middle remembers the middle never forgets never so can't leave. So they captured me. They said to me, to really leave, erase everything of the middle from me. If not, they catch me again. My tattoos is the middle's brand. So I cut up the brand. Have to. My speech also touched my middle. So I went to doctor to cut up my tongue, to cut up my brain, to break myself. This is actually... So in the book, Moby Dick, Queequeg does have a bit of broken English to some degree. Doesn't... S Quickly doesn't speak in like super clear sentences or very minute sentences. It's kind of just straight to the point in many ways. Yes. And kind of like what is in this. It's, and it's more of cultural there, but considering everyone kind of speaks the same language as we've mostly seen throughout all of Limbus, as far as it seems. Seems like Star Trek, Starstruck doesn't have any trouble speaking in, in the book. I pretty sure he had some broken English as well, or a little bit, because both he and Queequeg were more non-originally. It may have been Starstruck, it may have been someone else, it may have been Stubb. Someone else had, like, more broken English-ish, because it was not their first language. It's kind of thing. So, to imitate that speech, though, speech pattern, Rather than quickly like, being from somewhere, from some corp of some situation, situation that actually does potentially speak a different language, it's more like, ink. it's just, oh, she went to a doctor to literally alter her body and brain to affect her speech to make her less tied to the middle. <sighs> and I ran. Again. Even after you lost your speech, even after you cut your whole body to erase your tattoos, they're still coming after you? That's too high a price. Not true. Back then, I was... A maggot. Hey, 
You're being too hard on yourself. Even if it's just a metaphor. Crawling in filth, thinking filth was everything. Though filth was the world, thought I knew the world. Thought filth was the world, thought I knew the world. They wanted to make me big sister. So I killed and killed and killed. Not because of orders, killed with my own hands, because I wanted to, because I wanted respect as big sister. No, we're all still in our cocoons. Soon we'll break out of our shells and be born again, okay? Born again. Yeah, once this voyage is over, let's go find it together. A way to break out of our cocoons. How? I don't know. That's why I want to go find out with you together. This is first time. First time I heard Ishmael say she don't know. Saying she don't know. That's how we started looking beyond this voyage. Kraken Point, that's gonna be the home of my very own seafood grill joint. I ride up a nice place during our last voyage, you know. Aren't you just copying that one popular place from Marlinport? I ain't. Pip wants to be rich. Pip wants to be a landlord. Landlords make a ton of m m money, you know. We have yet to see Pip. Pip probably goes overboard. First, and just straight up dies. Leaf. <laughs> They've already basically said stubs are mermaids, so stubs out. Ah, uh, I've got my eyes on you, kid. You're gonna be my dishwasher. I've seen how you scrape the oil, oil off the ship. No, Starbuck. You'll rent Pip's building, and you better pay rent on time. <laughs> My first mate badge don't mean crap to you guys, don't it? People who wanted to bury their past, people living from one day to the next without dreams, without futures, people like me. Between every close call, between every moment of triumph, amidst the trials, brutal trials we endured in solidarity, we began to sketch the rough pictures of our futures. I sketch something for myself, too. In that sketch, I'm walking alongside Queequeg in some small port shrouded in mist and the smell of fish. Maybe we're holding large textbooks in our hands. Or maybe we're carrying suspiciously well-maintained weapons. Or maybe we're just headed somewhere with our hands full of tasty treats for the day. And we kept sketching. How we will continue to live out the rest of our days, how we will per persevere. Here, Ishmael stared wordlessly into her shimmering reflection into the rippling and opaque river of acid surrounding the boat. Just as she sh bleh, just as she stared into the lake back aboard the Mephi, her expression was so solemn and withdrawn that I couldn't bring myself to even approach her. In the opaque waters, Ishmael saw herself, her future that now rested forever out of reach, at the cold abyss of the lake. Her friends that could never return, how would it feel to know that your dreams will never come true? Wow, that line hits hard. I was too absorbed in this hazy, ruminating thought to realize that I had approached Ishmael and struck up a conversation. Ishmael, once this whole ordeal is over and we go back to Mephistopheles, she turned around. How about we all go get ice cream together? You know, the one Don Quixote wanted. It won't matter whatever future I bring up with Ishmael now, none of it would reach her. So the moment I could offer her now was a hopeful, immediate tomorrow. Something a little closer than the future that Ishmael is trying so hard to take back. Go back? What will you do, manager? If I told you that I don't want to go back. 
What do you mean? Once we destroy the heart, and once I squeeze the life out of Ahab with my own two hands, what would I go back to? Why would I go on? Is that an official resignation request? No, forget it. If Ishmael finally gets what she wants, what's next? Would there even be anything left? Should I... Is it right for me to even ask her to continue on to the next? Yes, it is. Because I want her... Ooh, I love sticky muck in the dungeons. Great thing to have. Oh, there's a heal right after the bitch. Um... I thought we were supposed to have some... I guess maybe it's gonna be... When we get to a specific... Maybe final fight... Rendezvous area before the heart. Uh, oh, I guess we have to go through the right atrium... And then we'll hit the rendezvous. Which will be at... The heart within the heart. Kind of thing. Uh. After defeating the anomaly, we sailed for a while without much incident. That was when a wall, a thick, solid wall, appeared before us. Artery beyond this wall. Wall opens, closes. Opening is very short. Don't get grabbed by mermaid there. Chopped in half if grabbed by mermaid. And with a heavy rumble, the wall immediately started to open. Keep mermaids off ship, they slow us down. We get cut in half. The mermaids must have sensed the rumbling. They begin rushing at our ship. Oh, of course you do this to me. After a reset, so no one has ISP. Okay. Okay, you need to hit it, Otis. But Wrath has advantage. <gasps> Playing with fire! Otis takes Vanguard, knocking mermaids off the boat. Good enough. Nice. We made it through. The wall is twitching like it's about to... Not a second after the stern of our boat made it past the wall, the door slammed shut. Let's keep moving to the artery. Select identity, heal for 20 SP. All allies healed for 5 SP. Not too bad. Not shabby shabby. Seems like this is gonna be. Oi, your headband. It's all mucked up with blood. No, that's a right terrifying look, isn't it? Nothing a quick wash in the water can't fix. Your headband, familiar. Familiar not. Desperate snot. Quick way. I survived by hanging on to the rope you tied to your coffin. The rope that you could have held. Instead, I held onto it with my dear life. That rope. Also for you. You want me to bucket out oil from in there? Yep. It's not as hard as it looks, though. The cadaver of the whale hung from a hook and swayed from side to side. Its stench was awful. The smaller and more nimble you are, the easier it will be. I'm not that small, though. It's a job for greenhorns anyway. Let's talk more oil bucketing. Get on with it, yeah. Will ya? Yeah. Oh, this is pre-stub. Mermaidified? A whaler's toil does not end with the killing 
end with killing the whale. Whalers also had to bucket and carry the inordinate amount of oil from the dead whale. I mean, how the hell do I know what's in there? Well, what do you think? Whale oil! It feeds us, it keeps us warm. Aboard the Pequod was a man named Stubb, the second mate. He was a man of irritable disposition. I... I can't. Into that abyss of nothing but a rope that looks like it'll snap from the slight breeze. I can't. Those words were nearly escaped my mouth when... What? What are you doing? Your rope. Tie it to my waist. But why? Tether? Like so. Now if you fall, I fall. You, me, together. Her sentences were stuttering and incomplete, but there was something there that oddly soothed me. Together. Someone to catch me if I fell. Someone to watch over me if I fell. So if I tied one end of the rope to Queequeg's waist and the other on mine... Huh? Funny, I should mention that. The rope was too short, too flimsy. It immediately snapped, and I was sent hurtling down into the large-filled belly of the whale. <laughs> what was harder to bear than the entrails, the viscera, the oil, the various other things that I didn't want to think about, the pitch dark black, the pitch black darkness. <laughs> Whale oil makes sounds as it quivers and reverberates. The reverberating oil tries to become one with everything it touches. Some city folk talk about this phenomenon using big words like ultra vibro fusion, oscillation frequency, how such elements are used to produce the resonant tuning forks, their wavelengths, and fuel. Well, the point is, a whale's oil covers and devours anyone it comes in contact with. And when you're devoured by a living whale's oil, you become a mermaid. And when you're devoured by a dead whale's oil, your sense of self slowly scatters until there's nothing left of you. That's when I... Realized how tiny and fragile I was. How insignificant of a thing I was. Maybe the whales were just lonely. And that's why they carried within them the oil that had the power to turn others just like them. In addition to turn others just like them, it, it was also turning them into mermaids that are immediately tied to them. Mermaids that would be with them and connected to them. Maybe people are the same. Out of loneliness, we want to make something. Someone ours. To paint them just like us, to fill them with the thing that makes us. I don't even know what makes me. How could I possibly paint others like me, even if I... Even, if even I don't know what I am. Maybe I'm shallower than a whale. I, who boarded the Pequod just because I wanted to live a life unlike those of others, just because living a humdrum life was too boring for me. I... What do I even want? In the dark, where the di Where the distinction of all things begins to blur, I saw a light. A ray of light scattered through the opening. I saw a rope drop from there. A rope lowered from the heavens into the dark, lonely abyss. This rope, I wanted to hold on to this rope and live. Because it was right... It was there, right before me. Ishmael. Rope, hold tight. Ah. Man, dying in that oil, now that would have left nothing for nobody to remember. Yeah, guess I almost died one of the most meaningless deaths in the city. I was born again that day. Maybe. The rope I held onto that day was a rope that could have never been set. That could never be severed. That rope, it snapped. No, no, it can't. Yeah. We can make it whole again. We tie another knot. 
As long as we can make it to the heart, you'll be free. Once we trapped here, we had to think one thing, one thing only, to not become mermaids. Doubting, hesitating, the pale beginning to grow on skin. You know, like whale oil. I thought the one thing... I thought one thing, to meet you again, to go on a new adventure with you, I have to escape, have to kill the whale. But to do that, I had to cut the rope. To not become a mermaid, I think that... That one thought, I think that one thought again and again, and suddenly, I buried you. The whale heart, to kill it. I put my heart to sleep. Is this sort of how they've averted the effects of becoming? It seems very, like, loose. Okay, who are you attacking that I have to move people around now? He song? Okay, who are you attacking? Don? Ishmael? Just screw up all my old points. Heathcliff, go over here. And Hong Lu can still be on a post. That's why. If I remember correctly, Ishmael also was not the one to initially fall inside the whale's mouth when they did have that excursion, I want to say... I don't think it was Starbuck. It might have been Stub. Or potentially another character who's just not here, but I know it was someone else who... Because I'm pretty sure... Ishmael is reacting from the side of the boat, watching it occur. Not the one to fall into the whale. Okay, wait. Let me match. Hong Lu. Hong Lu. Okay, you don't like Slash or Pride, so let's do this one instead. And also Hong Lu. Oddly enough, less favored. There's favored. And we'll just sprinkle y'all around. Dominating. Favored. On a pose. On a pose. On a pose. Who? Keith? Really? Neutral. That didn't work. Favored. Dominating. I have a couple on you. Dominating. Good. Good. Great, thank you. 